Hey there everyone, my name is Tolga and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're not going to be talking about video games, apps or technology or anything like that. I wanted to tackle a subject that I find really important and that I personally have a feeling a lot of people need information about. I get many questions in my personal life from my friends and my colleagues about how I got into medical residency in Germany. As I was starting with the entire process, I don't know, a few years ago now, there were practically no sources on internet, there were no one who was helping me on the way, and I thought that this video could help some people out there who were searching for just, just a little information about the overall experience or what the, what they should be expecting from um, from the entire process. This video is in no shape or form a detailed explanation of each and every step on the way. I know that there are businesses out there who help people. I just wanted to make a general guideline for people who come outside of um, European Union, what they should be expecting, what they should be doing, and how the general process looks like. I also thought a lot about if I should make this video in English or in Turkish because I come from Turkey, but in my experience, I don't always get this, these questions just from people um, from Turkey, but also from people uh, from many different countries. And I wanted to reach as many people as possible, thought that it would be the best way to choose the English route. I hope it goes well. Let's start with it. For those of you who don't know, I come from Turkey and in medical residency in Germany right now to become a specialist for psychiatry, psychotherapy and psychosomatic. As I said before, I am not a professional getting international doctors into Germany. That means that there can be mistakes, there can be false information, missing information, Please take this video as a general concept to understand how the process works and do your own research when it comes to actually going through with it. I also want to say that I will not be talking about Berufserlaubnis in this video, which is a temporary type of medical licensing to work as a doctor in Germany, because I think it'll just complicate things. And this video is aimed to inform people to get the permanent licensing anyways. I just wanted to put it out there. It'll not be mentioned in this video. Maybe it's a topic for another video, but right now it is just out of the picture. <laughs> Let's start with it. This video will be divided into four chapters. The first one being what you will need before you come to Germany. Second one, how the application process actually works. Third one, what do you do after you get your medical license? And the fourth one will be what you should be doing early on to help you in the process. So chapter one. What should you do before you come to Germany? Well, the first things that I will mention are no-brainers, but I will talk about them regardless because I do still get questions about them. Number one, you should learn to speak German. I know it's a no-brainer, but I do still get questions about it. There are a lot of people who live in Germany, especially in big cities like Berlin, who cannot speak one word German, but can still live and work easily. But medicine is not that kind of a profession. You will need to and are required to speak German fluently. The official requirement to be able to apply for a medical licensing is level B2, but the level itself does not really mean that much. You will need to speak German fluently. But trust me, if you accept that it takes a little while, take your time, although it is one of the most challenging parts of the entire process, it is not harder than studying medicine itself but i need to mention that it is important you will need to speak german fluently full stop number two you will need your medical diploma in your hand i know it is also a no-brainer but i just wanted to mention it because i know that the process is different in different countries for example um, if you want to get into the united states and take um, usmle exams you can start with it while you study but it is different for Germany. You will need your medical licensing. You will need to finish studying medicine before you can start with the process to get into Germany at all. Just wanted to put it out there. Number three is of course the psychological preparation of knowing that it is a long process. It is unrealistic to expect that you will start working here in two weeks. You just have to know that it's a process that takes months to years uh, to complete. Let's go on with chapter two how the application process works. Germany has 16 states and each state has their own state office for healthcare management. I am having troubles here trying to translate everything in English because a lot of things do not really have a direct English translation, 
but these healthcare or these state offices um, are also called different things in each state. For example, here where I live, which is Berlin, it is called Landesamt für Gesundheit und Soziales. They are responsible for giving people from different countries or foreign countries medical licensing. It means that you will be applying to these healthcare managers to get your medical licensing, which is called Approbation here in Germany. Each state or each of these healthcare managers have their own required documents and rules um, for you to apply for medical licensing. But once you get your Approbation, you can use it to work in all states. It also is, of course, logical to apply for the approbation in the state where you want to work because it saves you a lot of paperwork at the beginning but the other way around is of course always possible i think the biggest difference in between states is the waiting times um, if you're planning on coming to a popular state or city like Berlin, you will just need to prepare yourself to wait a lot longer in compared to other states. I did not know it at the beginning and I was shocked to see that how much of a difference it can make where you apply for your approbation. But it is something to consider, you should know it. You can easily check the requirements of the states if you write in Google just Approbation asked, which means doctor and name of the state and check their websites. I think almost all of the websites have also English translations if you're planning on checking them before you even learn German. When you check these websites, you will see that a lot of documents that you will need to collect are things that you will just get from your own country, like, I don't know, your birth certificate or like your criminal records, etc. Other than one really important document, which is the proof that your medical education is up to the German standards. If you're coming from European Union, it is much easier and simpler in this case. You will just need to prove that your medical German is good enough to be working in Germany. And in order to do that, you will need to take a test called Fachsprachprüfung. This test is not organized by these healthcare providers or healthcare managers, but by the medical chamber of the respective state. And from what I heard, this test is also pretty much identical in each state. You will be talking to a patient in this exam who is an actor or an actress. You, are, you will be taking the medical history and documenting everything at the end in written or digital format of your choice. The test itself is actually not that hard. It doesn't test your medical knowledge at all. The aim here is to see if you can communicate with the patient in German language and document everything that you've gathered using German medical terminology. Furthermore, because you did not study medicine in a country in European Union, your uh, medical education is not automatically taught to be up to the European standards. You will somehow need to prove that you have a general knowledge of a physician who studied in Germany. Well, there are two ways of doing that. You can either translate your entire curriculum and present that as a proof that your education meets uh, the German standards. This process is called Anerkennung. You need to be aware though that it could take weeks to months until you get a response if your curriculum meets the standards at all. You can get a response either in the form of just a few classes are missing and that you will need to provide more information uh, or proof that these also exist or in the form that, that your education does not meet the standards at all. The second option is to take a test to prove your knowledge. It is called Kenntnisprüfung. It is a part oral, part written exam with three examiners from three different medical professions in which you will have to examine a patient, write a paper about it, and also take an oral examination answering the questions of these three examiners. This exam is also slightly different in every single state I've heard, but mostly has the same principle. It can of course still be a little complicated to figure the documents out if you don't speak German, although a lot of websites have English translations. Um, anyways, it still is a little complicated and hard to understand. After you understand and speak German a little bit, you can easily navigate through the websites and figure out what kind of documents you need. Before that, it is not a priority anyways. So let's go on with the part three. What do you do after you get your medical licensing? Now, everything is over and you are completely appropriate, which means that you can practice medicine as a doctor in Germany. Now you will need to find a job. 
Um, I've seen a lot of people getting confused here because Germany does not have a national examination or registry system to get into residency programs. So the programs are not connected to each other like in the United States. You will need to do your own research and look for a job individually. You can either check the websites of the hospitals to see if they're looking for a resident for the specialty that you're interested in or write an email to the department to show your interest. It's then followed by the general process of getting a job, interviews, getting the papers required, etc. But you know that part already. In Germany, each specialty has a required amount of things to do in order to become a specialist after your residential training. In my case, for example, in order to become a specialist for psychiatry, I will need at least 60 months of residency, from which 24 months has to be in a ward and 12 months in a in neurology. You can find the full list in your state's medical chambers website. One of the good things is that you can divide this education. Uh, this entire process can take longer depending on what kind of a route you follow. So you can start an in internal medicine, work for a year, then decide to go and try radiology, work six months there and go back to internal medicine and still be able to carry the initial education you got in internal medicine with you. Well, it is a little complicated if you explain it in this way, but I just wanted to emphasize that you have freedom and you can, you can check your interests and find what's best for you. So we're in the last section. What should we be doing early on to help us on the way? If you cannot speak German, I would definitely suggest starting with the language learning process as early as possible. Uh, language learning is naturally a long process. It takes time and it is much better if you can spread it over time and do it more structurally. If you can foresee your future probably being in Germany, I would definitely suggest you to start with a German course while you're in university while you're studying medicine it makes a big difference and it also saves a lot of time if your university gives you the opportunity to do an internship abroad please please just use it and if not just do it in your free time in summer breaks or so in germany from what i experienced a lot of universities and clinics are really open to international interns who are trying to expand their knowledge you can just write an email to the department asking if you can intern for a certain amount of time of your interest. Even at the beginning, when you can not really speak German, you can just write an email in English. A lot of clinics are international and they open their doors also to students who cannot speak German. You can still learn a lot by observing. A lot of doctors can already speak English pretty fluently in Germany, you can use it to your advantage. Then you also have the opportunity to have a first-hand experience with German healthcare system. You can also see if it's a good fit for you or not. It is really important. I've done two internships while I was studying medicine and that helped me a lot to form my opinions about the entire thing and if it was a good fit for me or not. And lastly, prepare yourself psychologically for the long upcoming process. Don't let people or little hiccups on the way discourage you. Know that you cannot control everything and you cannot really prepare yourself for everything to come. You will learn a lot of things on the way and nothing will work out perfectly. There will always be something that you will need to take care of, but it's the nature of it and that's just how it is. So yeah. I think that was everything I wanted to mention. I just wanted to summarize the long process of getting into residency in Germany as a non-EU citizen. As I said, this is in no shape or form a 100% guideline or something like that. I just wanted to give a big picture to people who are maybe considering uh, coming to Germany or who just wants to know what the process look like or what they need to do when the things get serious. Yeah, um, if you have any more questions, you can definitely put them in the comments down below. I will try to answer them as my knowledge lets me do. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support. It would mean the world to me if you could give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Until the next one, see ya.